Here's a cab we're working on. It has about a hundred holes that I had to weld shut. I counted 50 plus just inside the cab itself and the firewall. So far, I got all the holes filled. I fixed the cowl, as you can see. Um, here, I mainly just welded the cracks. Here, I welded this crack, got that together, and then welded in a patch. And as you can see, this patch is everywhere. And this one was a little bugger. Look at that shape. Yeah, that's not easy to to fabricate. And over here, you have the uh, inner and outer hinge pockets. Got that in there. And I also got the hinge pillar and the step. as well as the inner and outer quarter patch. A lot of work. And believe it or not, we still have the other side to do. And it's roughly the same repair, all of this, just over there. Here's another patch. That floor right there is coming out too. So I'll do that along with the step. Then you got these nightmares. This is no fun. Um, these are the cap mount, so uh, what I'm stressing right here is strength, so we probably won't even grind these welds all the way down. And you got the one over there. That was pretty bad too. I had to take them out, fix all the cracks underneath and whatnot. And, and then there's that. Fun. So, in order to get this to line up, line it up like so, and uh, I cut this off right here so it could sink lower. And when it sink lower, I then take a bolt through here and bolt it through both of them, and I make my scrub line. Here we have the outer hinge pockets where I scribed right here, right here, right here, and right here. So I scribed my lines and then I decided to flange some areas. Right here and right here.
So, my original scribe lines are right here. I wanted to flange it, so I measured a half inch down here and a half inch down here. Then I took my flange tool and stepped it. And in doing that, my overlapping panel will lay flush with this right here. If you look closely, this is the area where it has a flange underneath that's stepped down. So, on the patch panel, along that edge, I beveled the edge. I don't want to bevel this edge because it's an open butt weld and I need that metal in there for the heat. But uh, I bevel this edge so when I clean up my welds, it's nice and even. My plan of attack for this floor pan is to cut it out right here along the tape and uh, I'm also going to cut right on this line, not the black marker, this line right here and this black line is where the patch panel ends. So if I cut it out here on this or this line, this will give me a half inch going this way past the edge. And then I can flange that down and the new patch panel will lay on top perfectly flush. At the end of the day, I've got the floor pan laying in there. And uh only thing I gotta do next is begin to scribe. As you can see, throw a couple self tappers in there to uh make sure it's all tight and everything and I get an accurate scribe so uh, when I scribe I'm also going to aim my scribe up so I end up with more metal so I tilt it up like that and uh, that's what's next So we got the floor pan cut out. It's going to be open butt welded here, flanged here, open butt weld there, flanged here, open butt weld, open butt weld, open butt weld. My thought process behind this was let me get this on here real quick. My thought process was all these cuts, flanges, edges, and my plan of attack revolves around this. The reason why it revolves around this is because this is the open butt weld, this is the most important part, and these lines have to line up. So say I scribe and cut everything all out, say I got uh, open butt welds like this here and here and here. That means when I line this up, due to human error, I might take this out of alignment. I might take this out of alignment. I might take that out of alignment. So, my whole thought process revolves around this. And uh, by making it flanged here, not only is it going to give it strength, it's going to allow me the ex extra floating space needed so this panel can shift this way or this way any way it needs to go so this matches. The fact that it's sitting on this box is the same same thing. It could float around here, here, here to line this up and it's not going to affect this. The same thing with here. As you can see, this flange hangs over the edge. Originally, it was down. The reason why I'm not using it is because it doesn't go down far enough. It doesn't meet this line. And so if I were to use this, it would come up to here, and that means I'd have to cut all this off. So I'm not going to do that. Basically what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take a cutoff wheel and cut it off right here. And 
and then just weld it closed. But again, this approach allows me to make my shifts up there so everything lines up. Now, this is the open butt weld. You might think, hey, well, you might have gap issues there by lining that up. No, I won't. And the reason why is because it goes up and down. That means I can have it up a little bit to tack it in. And once I got it tacked all the way across, I could then apply some pressure over here. So that's going to be fine. And that's pretty much my thought process in doing this. Let's see how it turns out. in. Fits really nice. Fits really nice. Perfect. Almost perfect. Not done yet, but uh, still have to cut this off, fill in all the tacks, and plug weld. I think it's going to be smooth sailing, but there's one little problem. There's a little gap right here. I must have brain farted on this, but uh, basically what I'm going to do to fill this is I'm going to turn my welder a little down, and I'm going to build tacks from here, going this way. You know, half inch, quarter inch to a half inch, and then I'll stop, let it cool down, and then I'll build more until it's uh, filled. But uh, this is the only mistake so far. Everything else looks great. I said, I'm a body man's treasure.